Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and start into section four um, of our reaction types um, unit. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about acid based reactions. And the biggest thing that we want to be able to do is at the end of this, we want to look at being able to complete titrations as well as um, dilutions with acids and base reactions and sort of see how um, these different forms or different definitions of acids and bases um, interact and will help us to be able to find out a little bit more about our reaction types. Now, when we get started, a couple things we want to do. The first thing is a strong acid or base is going to be uh, defined as one that completely ionizes in water. This is going to be a strong electrolyte, pointing back to where we were in unit one, or part one. Whereas a weak acid or base does not completely ionize in water, this is going to be a weak electrolyte. <clears throat> now, a list of the strong acids and strong bases are listed here below for you. You need to memorize these. Why do you need to memorize them? Because outside of these, all the other acids or bases are weak. Okay? So if you see HF or um, acetic acid or all these different things, those are all going to be weak acids. These will be the only strong ones. Now, also need to make a quick change. Let me just stick with me for a second because this one actually is not in there. So forget about rubidium hydroxide. It's not a strong acid, a strong base. Now, moving on. We have a couple different definitions that we use for acids and bases. The first one is saying that acids and bases just, I mean acids, sorry, donate hydrogen ions in water, or H+, whereas bases are going to donate hydroxide ions in water. When we have a basic um, understanding of acid-base reactions, we know that it's usually going to produce water, which you see here, as well as a salt. Oops, let me go back. Now, again, this is based on our Arrhenius definition of an acid. Arrhenius is our first type that we're going to deal with, so be prepared. Now, our second that we're going to look at is what's called a bronsted lowry acid or base. Now, this was um, years, a couple years after, not about 20, 30 years after um, Lewis had given his um, idea of what an acid was, and they found that they needed a more general uh, definition um, for an acid and a base. So what they looked at is there are some other substances that have uh, protons that they're able to give. These protons are actually just our hydrogen plus ions that we just talked about. Only thing that's left is a proton since the electron is gone. Now. In a reaction, they found that the thing that donated the proton was an acid. What actually accepted would be the base. So in the case of what we're looking at down here, the NH3 is actually our base, Oops. whereas our acid is H2SO4, which is again one of our strong acids. Now, looking at this, we also have what's called a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. The conjugate acid is the base once it has accepted the proton. So in the case of what we had here, it would be a conjugate acid base pair. Whereas our acid that has now gotten rid of, sorry, our hydrogen is now the conjugate base. So I'm going to see put C B, whereas this is C A. And my crude penmanship, I again apologize. Now when we're dealing with um, performing calculations for acid-base reactions, we have to do a couple of things. First thing we need to do is go ahead and list the species present in the combined solution. This will give us an idea of if a reaction will occur at all, and if so, what it will actually be. Once we've determined what the reaction will be, then we need to write the balanced net ionic equation for the reaction. We can use this information to calculate the mole of the reactant, determine the limiting reactant, and then calculate the moles of reactant or product. If we're continuing on from this point, we'll then have to look at the grams or the volume of the solution that is required. This is going to be very, very important as we talk about um, titrations and neutralization reactions. Now, titrations. What is a titration? A titration is a delivery of, of a measured amount of volume of a solution of known concentration, titrant, into a solution containing a substance being analyzed, the analyte that part makes a little bit of sense. Now, when we do this, basically we're trying to figure out how much of one of the substance that we know um, the concentration of, how much of it will actually need 
to neutralize the other. Now, when we've reached what's called the equivalence point, that's when we know that there's the same number of moles and acid, or sorry, moles of acid and base in um, the beaker that we may be using. We'll know this by looking at what's called the endpoint. And this is going to be usually when we do a titration, we have some sort of indicator that we use, something that will alert us to the fact that we have reached the point where we are equal or a certain pH range. So this will be called our endpoint. Notice the difference between the two. The equivalence point is when we have the same number of moles of acid and base. The endpoint is when the indicator actually changes colors. This may be after the endpoint, or sorry, the equivalence point, or maybe a little bit before the equivalence point. So that's why we really need to know the difference. This is where we're going to take a moment and go into section five. Now, this part was actually very short, but there's going to be a supplement video that's going to come up with practice problems so you get a chance to see how these calculations will play out. Um, stay tuned. Make sure you're keeping up with your notes, and I will see you again in class. Have a great afternoon, and see you tomorrow.